Hey, Paul, how's it going? G'day, Matt. G'day, Sanket. Yeah, I'm, I'm really good, thanks. How about yourself? Hey. How about you, Sanket? How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks for asking, uh, Matt and uh, Paul. And Paul, yeah, think, uh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Sanket. Sorry. Yeah, it's, it's been very nice coming on the show. I uh, really appreciate uh, you inviting me. No problems at all. You've got a you've got a very quiet voice, but you've done a lot of like pretty awesome work in the past that I've seen. So we're really uh, pleased to have you on. Um, it takes a few seconds for people to join up, right? So we only went live like thirty seconds ago. We're we're trialing a new thing. Um, so what we what we're going to do is we're going to go straight into the show in the future um, rather than have the placeholder. So if that if that works, we'll keep it up. Um, but I know that it might take a couple of minutes for everyone to join. As you roll in, just say hi um we'll we'll wait for you on the on the channel um lunchtime australia so there's probably a couple of people grabbing sandwiches before they join in yep. um so i i guess i guess sank it like we're, we're really pleased to have you on the show one thing just uh as an appetizer we usually go to what's new first right but uh what what are you hoping to show everyone in the audience after we do what's news yeah, absolutely. So uh, I would be uh, showing you all a mechanism by which we can dynamically choose API gateway keys. So yep. that is one of the uh, uh, cool, cool thing which I think would be very much interesting to everyone. Uh, and yeah, I, I'll, I'll be using the usual CDK stuff and all to demonst demonstrate all the, uh, uh, the uh, mechanism of using it. So yeah. Very nice. And um, and I guess, uh, you know, you work at AWS with us. Um, what's your what's your day to day look like? I know I know you're the serverless guy over in India, which is why it's it looks like it's uh, not quite morning yet for you. So thank you very much. But what's your day to do a day in AWS just so the audience knows? Yeah, a typical day, it's, it's really dynamic in uh, nature. So usually there's no pattern to it. Uh, the reason for it, I used to get I, I you know, I'm getting lots of uh, uh, a cool stuff to work with, uh, right from helping a developer, right to the on the top to help uh, you know work with uh, the founders and the CTOs and the architects, right? So yep. it's it's very dynamic in and it's the kind of work which uh, which I do. Uh, it's it's basically uh, you know I sometimes code, I sometimes draw architectural diagrams, I sometimes use Excel sheets, right? So it's it's quite exciting that way. Nice. No, that's really cool. And and I know, I know you've seen some crazy amounts of scale. Um, you know, Australian businesses. You know, we 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 do pretty well when it comes to our stuff. Um, but so, some of the numbers that I've seen, like in terms of like services and startups in India, just like blows my mind. Right. So we'll 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 get back to this in a second. I reckon. Um, let's dive straight into like what's new. Wasn't there one was... thing that you were going to ask t today? Uh, I'll, I'll ask. Okay, Paul. Um, actually there's really two things, right? Like the, the first thing is, um, what are you planning for, for Christmas season, Paul? Oh, okay. Yeah. Th that wasn't the thing yeah. that I was thinking about, but yeah, yeah. Um, so some of my things have moved around a little bit on my bench. Um, and we've got something that's coming up that we'll probably see a little bit more of that AWS marketing and working on, but I've been like putting together this little, um, this little Christmas tree here. So I've got the yep. family stuff, but I've got this little Christmas tree. And, uh, you know, you can see here that like behind here, I've wired that all up and I've got this like LED display piece in the middle. Um, but yep. this is something that we will probably dive a little bit more into the show. So I know in the past on the show, we've done hooking Raspberry Pi um, into AWS using, you know, the mechanisms through AWS to connect to on-premise to off-premise to, you know, edge devices and be able to interact directly with electronic equipment. Um, so I'm going to do something with this. So we're going to mm -hmm. see the ability for you to, you know, turn on and off the lights and provide a little, you know, blocks of JSON that will be able you to, you know, specify some patterns and be able to view and live stream that. So, um, you know, that should be fun. Um, it's been a fun little exercise on the weekend nice. to you know, cut that all out and file it all out and make sure it all look, looked correct before I've so actually got into designing the software. So I, I couldn't tell in the stream, right? But that's not gingerbread then. So that's like a wood board that you've cut out. So I can't, I can't eat it and just like uh -huh. let the LEDs sit around, right? No, it's it's no. laser cut out. It's like some thin okay. MDF that's cut out. It's yep. been laser cut out. Yeah. So, um, you know, it'll have to get painted and prettied up a little bit more, but that should be really fun. Very um, nice. And there was one other thing that 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 Matt was talking about that says, do we do we need a jingle? Like, yeah, this was the, that was that was number two. That's yes. right. 
So we've got a couple of people here from Colorado. We've got the internet capital of the world. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure where, where you would classify that. So maybe clarify where that is. So we've got people from around the world. We've got Sankat from India. So we've, we've got some, you know, varied demographics here. Should the show have a jingle and should Matt like sing a song or, you know, crow like a magpie or something at the start or like a kookaburra or something like that at the start of the show to kick it off? I, I think your voice is more so soothing, right? So, <laughs> So like when someone asked me that question the other day, I'm like, yeah, like that, no problems. Like I'll get Paul to do something, right? Like, uh, you know, maybe we could do a, a PewDiePie type intro, right? Like, yeah, um, we, like I, I'm not going to do it on the stream now, but uh, like I feel like uh, I feel like that opening could, uh, you know, like something like in your face. It's a little bit obnoxious, so I'm like really not that keen on it. But uh, <laughs> do we do we need to do something? Do people like the idea of having like a a little like yeah. You know, I've seen other streams that where, you know, when they make mistakes or they do something funny that they do like five push-ups to, to you know, to, to, you know, get the energy energy going. So, you know, thinking of something a little bit, a little quirky or something might be something interesting that our audience might like. Yeah, I don't know, that, what do you that think? Up, that other channel, yet? like, let's hydrate, you know, like I've seen yeah. that as well. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we can put yeah, push up hydrate. Push-ups is a good idea. <laughs> We'd get, oh, we should one? get fit at the same time. Yep. I don't know. So, yeah. yeah all right. Well, maybe let's like have a quick look at some of the releases that are coming out. Yeah, have have a think about it. Like, tell us yes or no, um, because I know that it can come across as pretty obnoxious. So, um, so we've got to decide whether we want to do it or not, and I want the audience to help us with it because um, I, I would be I would be leaning towards not doing anything and just like getting straight into it uh, if it was me. So, uh, the first one is CDK for Kubernetes, right? So. Um, CDK was open source. Um, so what we've seen is we've seen like a, a large number of projects pick it up, just uh, not not with, just within the AWS space, but outside of that as well, right? So CDK has been used in uh, by the K8s team, uh, CDK K8s team. They've made a project, um, you know, where you can basically use CDK to build Kubernetes infrastructure. Uh, we've seen Terraform do works here as well. Um, so you can, create, uh, you can create cloud assets using the Terraform CDK, which is in developer preview. So it's really cool to see that, um, you know, like things are moving in the space and it's not just AWS that are like moving along with CDK, but we've got other organizations that are making like what they're building um, open up to the computer, uh, to, the, to the industry in a GA um, type facility so they can use it within production. So that's really cool. Um, another CDK release is, uh, and I've got to play with this, but one of, one of our colleagues was super excited about it. Um, he's been helping us develop this new CDK workshop, um, which is an advanced CDK workshop with some of the things that Paul and I had noticed as being gaps in, in some of the current workshops that we've got. So we kind of thought it would be really nice to roll these together. So one day we might run through with the audience that on a particular session um, but CDK now um, supports hot swap deployments and rollback control. So this just gives you better granularity, especially when you're uh, rolling things out that are built within CDK in a pipeline together to make that experience smoother and easier to, to pull back if there's an issue. So this is, this is going to be something that we will dive into at another date, I reckon. Um, but I'm pretty excited to get hands on with this and play around with it because CDK and Amplify are probably my favorite two services. Um, um, let us know in the comments, though, like what your favorite services are. I, I know that uh, I can be quite controversial in my opinion. Um, Mechanical Turk. Mechanical Turk. Um, Sankit, like what's yours? I, I, I'm, I'm guessing I know the answer to this one. Favorite service? Uh, uh, probably Lambda. Lambda, yeah. La Lambda is pretty close up there for me as yeah. well. Like, yeah, serverless is awesome. So yeah, this is this is pretty cool. Uh, I'm just going to race through these today because I really want to get onto the the hands-on side and see what Sankit's built. Uh, Dynamo uh, now allows you to automatically populate sample data, um, which is going to help you build and visualize data models uh, a lot easier. Uh, I know I know customers have been really wanting this particular feature for a long time, which is why I decided let's share it today. Uh, customers generally like have multiple environments, and they they might have some scrubbed data that they want to use across like you know multiple developer accounts and uat accounts so this just makes that job really really easy where they can like move their data around they can import and, and populate data as they build up like a dynamo db instance in their new uh, account in particular so that's really really cool 
And Tori, I can see your comment there. Um, always love labs. Yeah, we, we, we do too as well, right? Like um, uh, we had a really good one on Sam yesterday as part of yep. AWS Programming Tools in Melbourne. And uh, I, I just like getting hands on a lot of time. And that's kind of why we do the show as well. Um, we, we, we try and stay away from PowerPoints and, uh, and try and learn um, and trip um, for new things um, live on the stream so you guys can can laugh and see our learning process and uh, um, you know and uh, and hopefully support us um, so the next one is AWS instance scheduler so this one is like like a lot of customers have their own methodology in terms of how they operate within the space but instance scheduler is going to make it really easy to set a time frame that you want your UAT instances your development instances to run between so it's available for developers to, to test builds. Um, you might have some back of house applications as well that you might want to run for a certain time frame and then kind of shut down as well. You might have like data analytics workloads as well that kind of fit this use case where it's like you want it to scale up at nighttime on spot and then you want it to kind of roll back down like, um, you know, as it comes towards an end at the end of the night. Um, the whole thing around this is just saving on the cost of your infrastructure, right? So um, you can save a significant amount of money if you if you have workloads that you can schedule to define times and you take a snapshot of it and restore it the next day, or you just blow these away altogether as well. So instant scheduling is just a really nice um, feature to have that's like an official way of doing this now as well, along with the, the other methods that have come across in the past. Um, Q&A bots, so really cool. Um, Q&A bots are built on top of Amazon Lex. Um, they are made to make it really easy to at the end of the day, have like a simple knowledge base with like um, questions and some variations of how those questions could be answered through intents, and then and then have the responses uh, be able to be passed through to end users. So it's a little less dynamic than a a full on Lex chatbot that's going to be able to take you on a journey and fulfill a purchase or you know do something for you. Q and A chatbots are really there to give you um, answers to. Um, you know, they're like a better version of FAQs on websites um, that you don't have to sift through. You can just directly ask a question and get an answer back. So yeah, pretty excited to see how this evolves. Yeah, go ahead, Paul. I, I, it was, it was uh, you know, you know that the chatbots are not human, but still I, it was able to figure out the exact specific vehicle that I was looking to get a price of. And, um, you know, it, it worked okay, you know, better than having to call up. You know, they didn't want to disclose the price online. They wanted you to go through a bit of a process to gather some info, but it seemed to work pretty well. So, yeah, good. Just a good one. Nice. I I, I, um, <laughs> I never name telcos, right? But sometimes I'm like, I need to know this particular fact about international roaming or, you know, I need to know this particular fact about, like, um, you know, this particular model of the phone that I've got and um, how it works in this instance. And I, I used to dig through, like, never ending amounts of FAQs, like to find the answer that I had. And so if I can ask it conversationally, hopefully I just ask it once and I get there straight away. That's that's my view on the chatbot realm. Um, so moving on though, uh, EC2 Mac. So we've actually had a lot of customers ask about this in the last week. I've actually spent like probably eight hours maybe of my time um, playing around with Mac instances on EC2. They're Intel based at the moment. Uh, they've been uh, available in Singapore, uh, somewhere in the UK. I can't remember exactly where. And they've also been in like um, they've been in a higher region as well. Um, so pretty pretty happy that there's been additional regions, um, including South Korea, Tokyo, uh, Mumbai, and Sydney. So this all happened this week. Um, so hot off the press. If you're doing iOS build um, server projects, this could be a really good way to go. Um, you know, I, I managed to actually like build an app, make an IPA file, uh, roll it out to my App Store account um, on iOS end to end through command line um, using the build service, which is really cool. And then Paul uh, made me VNC into it and use it like a like a normal Mac as well. So you've got both those options of command line SSH and uh, and VNC to have like a, a visual like GUI representation of what's happening on Mac. Uh, Open search, uh, so is just had a improvement to the management console. Um, really good for data analytics use cases. Um, I know a lot of customers use this for their search bar as well across their sites. So it's nice to see that open search is kind of like um, you know improving the experience within the management console. And I'll have to check that out at a later date. 
And very, very last, uh, but not least at all, is Beanstalk, um, which a lot of people start with um, and is a pretty cool service as well. Uh, Beanstalk now supports database decoupling. So this was a big pain point um, to customers like before we had this feature. Um, you know, they, they were always worried about like Beanstalk was very tightly coupled, coupled to the database and that like when they did something to um, their Beanstalk builds or they, you know, that was quite significant, they were worried that they were going to affect the database in some capacity. So this kind of like allows you to, um, to kind of have that decoupled infrastructure with databases, which gives you a bit more of a, a feeling that you've got a safety net there as well. So pretty, pretty happy about that. And last but not least, it's morning sync, it's time. So we were talking about it just before the call. You might have heard a couple of birds in the background, but he's got cuckoos outside his window. So pretty, pretty cool. Um, so he's not in a shed, um, but he's got a lot of wildlife around and you can hear it again. So if you do hear noises, um, it's the cuckoo birds. Um, Paul and myself, uh, we have magpies. <laughs> it's magpie season, so they're swooping around our backyards at the moment. And then um, as well, kind of being on the very outskirts of Melbourne, um, I've had a couple of these, uh, which yeah, I love kookaburras that are in my backyard at the moment. So for any bird lovers, um, those are the sounds that you're going to be hearing over the stream today. And what I'll do is I'll stop sharing my screen now. Matt, we just got one quick question, maybe answer this. What does it yeah, mean yeah. database was coupled with Elastic Beanstalk? Yeah, so like a lot of people like would have um, builds where, you know, they'd set within their build script, like the database um, was to be generated alongside the application that they had. And so it wasn't really separated out. Um, and then, you know, they'd start with a simple use case. So like, this is the Beanstalk environment that I want. This is the database that I want. Um, they'd build everything in that. And even though like the database kind of sat separately um, over an RDS, RDS land, land, they were really worried that like whatever they did to uh, their beanstalk environment in particular would um, would cause something to happen within that database instance that was set. So like that database might be removed. It might be, um, you know, like there might be a number of things that could happen in that capacity. And I, I think a lot of it was theoretical. Um, I, I don't think it would really happen in reality. Like I, I think you, you've got options to make sure that the RDS instance in the database stays. Um, but this kind of gives people the comfort, like now they can launch that database separately, like whenever they do stuff to their Beanstalk config files or their Beanstalk environment, um, they don't have to have the stress of what if is my view on it. Yeah. And maybe like his follow up is like, well, can't you just use RDS effectively? So that's, I, like, what, that's I, what I do, actually. Yeah, I don't, I don't actually. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do the same thing. So I've done, I had a couple of different Beanstalk applications. And I've just managed the database separately and passed all the connection in as environment variables and then fixed up the networking to work that way rather than managing the database through Beanstalk. So I guess like if you go that way, this is, won't affect you at all. But if you were managing your database as part of your whole holistic Beanstalk deployment, um, it will provide you a little more assurance. Yeah. And if you created multiple Beanstalk apps, like you might have had the, the issue of like, how do I access my database instance, right? And it is really in reality sitting in RDS so you can. Um, but, you know, it's generated and attached through like this Beanstalk environment that you made first up. So it's, it's really like, I think it's a nicer pattern to just spin up something in RDS separately. And I, I think visually all this has done is just change the arrangements in the console of how you can do things. And it's basically just generating RDS behind the scenes, which most people did anyway. Um, but yeah. All right. So, so uh, thank it. Just for anyone that's come in, that's brand new. What have you got for us today? What did you What did you want to come in and talk about? Tell us a little bit about your project. Yeah, hi. So uh, today, what we what we'll be going to do is basically, uh, you know, create a small application, a serverless application using CDK. And uh, the whole objective of this project is to learn how we can dynamically inject uh, API keys so that an appropriate usage plan can be selected. So uh, let's let's quickly get started on what does the usage plan mean. So what I will be doing is uh, I'll be having a small presentation, two or three slide decks, right? Uh, the small one, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, I will explain you, you know, what would be what what is a usage plan, uh, you know, what are API keys, uh, and what are we going to build? And uh, once that is done, we will quickly go on hands-on keyboard and start developing the app right away. Uh, but just to help you understand, uh, let me quickly share my screen. 
and we can get started yeah yeah it sounds good and th this is a this is a pattern like because you're an, you're an expert in the the serverless space right this is a pattern that's not too well documented but a lot of customers uh seem to need it an eventual state of um you know when they're building their service applications so let me pop your screen up there we go mm -hmm. uh, everyone can yeah. see it sure thanks thanks Matt. So uh, let, let's quickly uh, spend a couple of minutes on uh, learning what an API key is and what are, what are usage plan, right? So basically a usage plan is uh, basically, uh, it helps us understand, you know, how APIs are consumed, right? Uh, in a way that is uh, intended to. So for example, I can have a say goal usage plan where I can say, hey, uh, a person with a goal usage plan can consume uh, APIs, uh, you know, 10,000 requests per day or 10,000 requests a month. And uh, so that is called as quota. And how fast it can be consumed. Like I can say that, you know, uh, we can, uh, a person with a silver usage plan can consume an API with, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, 10 requests per second or 500 requests per second with a burst capacity of 50, right? So, so that is something which is called as throttling. So, uh, uh, so that way we can basically achieve two things. One is uh, based on how we serve the APIs, uh, we can restrict or throttle the users uh, and uh, basically uh, also, you know, play a role of, you know, limiting the number of requests going back to the origin, right, in order to protect the origin infrastructure as well. Uh, second is basically, uh, you know, we can have a, a, a usage plan uh, specified at at, at one or more more uh, API gateway stages and methods, so we can apply uh, usage plan at uh, the gateway uh, stages as well as on the method as well, right? So we'll quickly we'll uh, we'll look at this how we can do it uh, in the later stage, and then we would also have a usage plan where API keys uh, are used, and these API keys are a unique way to identify uh, the uh, the client which is being called, right? Uh, and uh, and uh, throttles and quotas can be enforced on individual API key levels, right? And uh, so so this is basically uh, what uh, API keys and usage plan would look like. Um, what we also have is uh, how these API keys are sent out uh, to the to the API gateway, right? And a very popular way is to use uh, you know asking the clients to mention the. Uh, the API key as part of the request header, uh, especially X API key, and let the client call uh, the API with this API key. Another use, uh, another uh, way of calling API gateway uh, and uh, you know uh, injecting uh, uh, API keys is via Lambda authorizer. That is not really well known, and I thought you know let's explore that possibilities and multiple use cases and what we can. Uh, achieve using it, right? So uh, each API gateway, we can configure a Lambda authorizer and uh, Lambda authorizer can inject that, uh, it can inject, uh, uh, you know, API keys uh, while calling, uh, calling a, while making a request to the origin, right? Uh, so this is basically the crux of the whole solution. So we'll be using a custom Lambda authorizer doing a dynamic lookup uh, of, of API keys uh, in, in DynamoDB table, right? Uh, but but that is just one way of looking into it, right? You can have, you can write all sorts of logic to dynamically choose the API keys. Uh, one of the ways which we'll be doing today is using a lookup table using DynamoDB. Uh, so let's see, uh, you know, wh what, are, what are the popular asks from all our customers, right? Uh, uh, so they they have all sets of users. So they have all set. Uh, they have an API which has been already been published, and typically customers ask me, you know, hey, uh, I don't want my clients to change any code, but what I really need to do is, you know, apply throttles and quotas to protect my infrastructure uh, uh, based on, uh, let's say, uh, a request header or a request parameter, or probably a value inside a header as well. Uh, a value inside the uh, body as well, right? So, for example, I, I may have an XML body which is sent, which is basically a post request. And uh, I need to make sure that if a particular value matches uh, uh, a particular value, right, uh, 
a refresh body match any attribute matches a, a body value you know hey uh, use this key so that it can be request can be throttles or quotas can be applied uh, so these are like typical ask uh, and 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 the client does not need to make any changes on their end right uh, so these are these are typical asks which I uh, usually get from uh, customers, right? Yeah. Uh, what, what one thing on this as well, right? Like I'm guessing some customers want to use this, so that they might have a service that's for the the app that works with end users, but then they they could use the solution to like limit some of their internal traffic for things that aren't like uh, mission critical, right? So you can kind of you can kind of like have like internal teams that want to consume the same API that you're producing for your service, um, use the throttling and, and quota plans, like to, to kind of have like their, their own set space. And then you can have like something that's a, like a larger slice of the pie for the, the critical like end user app that needs to work uh, consistently all the time, right? And, 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 so, uh, and trying, to, trying to manage this yourself in your own application, like that's, that's a lot of extra work. Mm. Um, like, so I've worked on platforms before where we've had to issue keys for people. However, the, the keys and the counting the requests that they've done per key, um, being able to query the database all the time to look that sort of thing up is like, you know, that's expensive as well. So just the matter of putting on the ability to throw the endpoint can actually degrade the performance of the endpoint itself or your application itself. It also gives you that good lever to pull, right? Like if you need to um if, if you need to have like a you know least working path on your application right like the like something massively bad happens and you need to to scale back everything and have like just that one um you know app or particular function in the app work um smoothly for end users so you could kind of use the solution for that i'd see as well so it's pretty cool yeah and Paul's right, like push like there's a battle between like what should exist in the front end and the back end, right? Um, all the time. And a lot of the time things that should sit in the back end like this might be moved to the front end. Um, and, and having this there like just allows you to have a lot more granular control over uh, everything that's coming into, which is nice. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, sure. Uh, and, and you know, especially in case of uh, ISVs, right? They have like multiple customers uh, and making a change in the way an API is consumed, it's like asking like, you know, multiple customers to change the way they are calling the API. So it, it becomes really difficult to, uh, uh, you know, make uh, changes in the way clients are calling uh, and passing additional headers and share those API keys with them. It's It's a, it's a non-trivial uh, operational ask. So that that would be like for abuse use cases, like you're a you're a SaaS company, and you know you've you've given your API to twenty people. Those twenty people, like one of them, um, might uh, like misconfigure or abuse it. This, this way, you kind of limit the impact or the blast radius around that. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Basically, you know, tell just me, tell me the question, you know. how that compares to WAF as well. Maybe just address that. Yeah, I mean, like, so sorry, go ahead. No, you go, it. Good. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, from WAF perspective, right? So, it's it's a layer seven uh, DDoS protection uh, system, or it basically protects against all sorts of vulnerabilities uh, typically identified. Uh, the customers which I work with usually, you know, use WAF to protect against DDoS or SQL injection or cross site scripting. Uh, however, uh, this particular uh, usage plan and uh, quote, uh, you know, API keys, they are basically uh, uh, used in a way that, you know, hey, you, to restrict something and to throttle and, uh, you know, apply quota on the way APIs are consumed, right? So it is, it, 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 we may not use it for, uh, you know, uh, a layer seven, uh, layer seven, uh, 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 layer seven attacks or such. These are basically a limiting factor onto the way APIs are consumed. And I and I think WAF's got some special like capabilities around like bot protection and this and that, right? Like, um, you know, DDoS attacks. So, like uh, the the pattern that I've seen is a more normal would be like you might have WAF in front of um, all the things. And then this would sit behind, and then this would this would simply allow you to have that throttle based on all the different people that need to consume this API. 
Um, so, you know, once once actual legitimate traffic comes in, those user, end users, they can then um, segment up the pie if it needs to be uh, segmented up with this um, capability. Uh, so here's what we're going to build today. Yeah. So, um, so, so if you look at this overall solution, right, uh, what we will be doing is the, the heart of the solution is Lambda authorizer, but what we are going to really build is basically an API gateway, uh, with the mock integration. I don't, I don't, uh, so for, for, for us in interest of time, we would be using mock integration, uh, to play a role of an origin. And, uh, what we will be doing is, uh, uh, we will be using the key source as one of the request parameters right so if, if a particular uh, parameter matches a value we would be dynamically looking up uh, the value uh, for that for the api key in amazon dynamo db and uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be injecting it uh, in the in the api gateway uh, however uh, we can extend this solution in a way that you know if a particular uh, identifier is present in the request body we can provision in uh, a cloud front in front of api gateway and have lambda at edge parse the request body uh, so for example in case of uh, a json body we can use uh, open source libraries like json path to parse the uh, request body and pass uh, uh, pass the uh, pass the request body and then pass the value as as a custom header to the API gateway, and the solution would would continue to work as it is as we do for request parameter as well, right? Uh, we can easily change it to use any of the uh, request headers to be an identifier for API key, right? So uh, so this is how uh, we and, and everything would be provisioned using CDK. I like CDK in a way because it's it, it helps me uh, use my existing skills uh, for uh, writing, you know, writing uh, uh, Java applications or Node.js applications or Python applications to provision my infrastructure as well uh, in, in a more uh, a programmatic way. So we'll see that in a bit. Uh, and and let's let's get started. Uh, yeah, uh, let's get started on this. That sounds good. I'll uh, I'll take down your screen. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah. So when VS Code's opened up, and I'll put you back on. Any questions yeah. so far for Senkit? The audience will uh, type back in a second if they've got anything, but uh, I'll let you get prepared. Good. Uh, I'm ready uh, to start with that. Perfect. Uh, here we go. So VS Code is up. All right. Cool. So uh, as as any uh, any typical CDK project, right? What we will be doing is we will be starting with uh, initializing the CDK. Right? So CDK init uh, app uh, minus minus language simple. So I'll be choosing TypeScript. Oh, you've got an, you've got an R and TypeScript at the start. Just uh, if you want to fix that up. Yeah. There we go. We did have a question from Tori as well. He, he did ask, what's the advantage of using Lambda or Frizes um, for the solution? Absolutely. So Lambda authorizers uh, are basically, uh, it, it they serve two purpose. One is basically to the authentic, to authenticate a request. Uh, and as well, uh, you know, the second, which is second feature, which is not well known is basically we can use Lambda authorizers to inject API keys dynamically, right? Uh, so if you have uh, an, uh, uh, you know, a system uh, like an IDP or something, uh, which basically where you, you have provisioned your users and want to, uh, you know, do a decoding of JWT token, uh, validate the user, you can do it in Lambda authorizer before it being passed to the origin. So you can do all sorts of custom uh, uh, logic inside for authentication as well as authorization. Very cool. Cool. So uh, the CDK project is up and running. And if you look at the source code, right, we have a lit project where we have uh, a stack uh, for, for our project where we'll be writing all the code, where we'll be creating an API gateway, a DynamoDB table, 
uh, and 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 you know start leveraging uh, uh, cloud infrastructure start using the cloud infrastructure uh, we also have uh, uh, a way of initializing the stack which is present in the bin directory uh, and uh, we would be creating that stack or initializing stack here we will be defining the stack here as well so let's go ahead uh, let's create a sim super simple uh, api gateway uh, so for that, what we'll be doing is uh, I will be importing the construct library uh, for API Gateway. Right, I need to it right away. Gateway from API Gateway construct library. So this is how you. Uh, do that. What I will do is quickly do an npm install as well. This is one of the favorite things of like CDK2 while you're doing that is uh, I don't have to do an npm store for everything that I decide to use, right? It all comes down in the one package. So CDK v2 is developer preview. So don't, don't go and uh, listen to me and use it just yet in production. But um, it's just a nice little change that I like. Um, and I'm hoping... Hoping sometime soon I'll see it tick over from developer preview to uh, full release. Uh, fingers crossed on that day. Yeah. And uh, sure, sure, Matt. I mean, I am also excited for that release to come out. Uh, okay. So what also we'll be doing is we'll, uh, it's, so this uses a uh, uh, default CDK stack. But uh, what I would like to show you all as well is let's, let's create a small uh, interface as well. So. So that we can pass uh, all sorts of parameters to the stack. Uh, I usually keep it simple, so let's call this call it as interface. Okay. Props, right. and it extends. Uh, And what I will be doing is, I, it will just have a small uh, uh, single parameter key source. We'll call it as key source. And uh, we have type string. So, uh, and what we'll be using is, we'll be using this to uh, identify or pass uh, what request, what is the name of the request parameters which we'll be using for doing a dynamic lookup in our Lambda authorizers. So this will be eventually passed as a as a lambda environment variable, right? And what I will do is I will basically just replace the properties and I will make sure it's not optional because that's what we uh, need. Right? So yeah, there we go. And uh, what am I missing? Yeah, that's right. So let's go and uh, you know change. Uh, uh, Instead, I'll just remove these things. And here, it's bits. So let's take an example of a, a bookstore, right? Wherein uh, uh, there are the API gateway basically returns us uh, a name of a book, for example, right? And if the genre matches, say, a, a computer related book, right? We can say that, you know, we want to uh, have a lamp. Uh, 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 usage plan which basically does uh does 100 requests uh, per day or 10 requests per day for sake of testing it and if it is a cooking book right we may want to say hey uh, you know do it give give a quota of 15 requests per day instead of 10 for a computer book right so mm -hmm. let's say the key source is genre and uh, uh, this is how for, we'll be going ahead with uh, Generally, being the the, the uh, request uh, uh, HTTP request parameter name. Uh, cool. So let's start provisioning uh, uh, the the REST API, right? Uh, let's start with the provisioning of REST API. So I'll say const. Uh, Yeah. 
Ini ya. Right. And the typical way to initialize is just mention the uh, where uh, what is the scope, and I just give it a name, and uh, we will basically start uh, configuring all the parameters. Right. So let's configure an endpoint configuration, right. and I'll say that it is a uh, uh, not type being a regional endpoint, right? I, I don't want it to be a global one. I think that might be and a bit, I, bit easier with IntelliSense now. Yeah, it saves me two characters. Uh, what I will say is, I will say return deployment as true as well. And uh, I, I also mentioned deployment options. Right? So these are like uh, uh, a JSON object here. And if, if you look at these deployment options, right, I will say I want to enable tracing. Tracing enable is true. Uh, I will say data, enable data tracing as well. So these are like, uh, you know, the way you mention all the options for your APIs. I'll say logging level to be API dot method logging level. Let's say for sake of our development to be info. And I also want to enable metrics. True. So these, these are these are multiple uh, deployment op options which are typically enabled when I am developing the code, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So this is how you. Uh, uh, basically talk about uh, you know defining an api once that is done what i will do is uh, in interest of time i'll just uh, copy a copy a small code snippet here where i will define a a, a root uh, a root method right i will call it as call it as a method which is basically i'll add, add a method for my api gateway mm -hmm. then i'll say hey uh, the met if you look at the uh, parameters used for add method it's it's uh, you know what uh, method you want to do uh, to enable i will say yeah use any and uh, second configure the origin uh, for origin i'll be using mock integration uh, mock integration really gives me a nice capabilities of testing apis before i you know i actually do an integration with an api with an with an origin right uh, and uh, what it will be do it, it will return me uh, uh, just a just a just a JSON uh, message, right? Saying API name is, is Mook API. Mm -hmm. uh, this is how uh, I'll, I'll just expose a small uh, root level uh, method. Additionally, what I will be do is I will also expose a book API as well. Uh, so I really uh, let's copy a code snippet here. So this this would give me a capabilities uh, of adding a resource called as books. And uh, what I will be doing is I'll be exposing a, a very standard uh, hard-coded uh, response, right? Uh, saying that, you know, hey, name of the book is whatever, right? And uh, ISBN value and a registration date and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So this is basically a static response from a mock integration uh, just for our testing purposes. This can be really handy when you want to stub out your application, right? So you haven't yeah. built the back end, but you want some sample data. So the front end can go ahead and build against it with the expected responses coming back. Absolutely. Let's go and see, uh, you know, how CDK synth look like. So CDK synth would uh, basically synthesize my CDK uh, uh, stack uh, for with uh, and convert it to a cloud formation template. There is an error. Uh, let me go and see what it means. I see. Um, it is somehow. Uh, 
Am I missing something? Just having a quick scan. It's not static, but it's static. Let's go get what you can see. With, with those mocks responses, that's like, that's just JSON. Like, that's not programming code. So you can, like, when you say typed response, like, whatever you define as, like, your that payload or that static payload is what's going to be returned. So it's, yeah. If that's what you mean, JW, mm -hmm. maybe re clarify the question. So that, that is just, you're going to get back a, a block of JSON. However, you define that in the JSON is what you're going to get returned back when you call that mock endpoint. Let's do a CDK deploy. Uh, and while uh, the deployment happens, right, uh, let me quickly uh, show you uh, what we really are building, right? So uh, if you look at this request, right, uh, what this is the book uh, uh, resource, which we will be exposing via API Gateway. Uh, and we are taking an example of request parameter. Similarly, you can you know extend it, uh, extend solution to use a request header as well. But uh, yeah, in case of request parameter, I'm using Postman as a tool uh, to quickly test my API. I like it a lot. It makes life simpler for me. Uh, and uh, what we'll be doing is, uh, you know, if if, a, if the genre of a book is computer, right, uh, let's apply a particular usage plan. And if it is, say, a cooking book, right, we may want to apply a different usage plan. And we will be, and I'll be using uh, uh, a postman to test all the request uh, uh, and, and it, it makes me uh, you know it, it, it is really handy to change all the parameters all the headers and and all right so I like it a lot cool I see yes and uh, CDK will do everything for me and once this is deployed, we'll quickly see how the request response will look like. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, meanwhile, I just wanted to check with everyone. Uh, were we all aware that you know Lambda authorizers can inject API keys dynamically, or rather can inject API keys? I just wanted to get an heads up on whether uh, it's it's a well known uh, way of. Uh, uh, using the authorizers or is this something which probably most of us have uh, ignored or missed you can just type it in the chat if you want there's a couple of things in the chat just looking at it while uh, while the build's coming along uh, we've got somebody asking, is there a nice way to do Swagger integration? Um, JW01 was also asking um, another question around, um, you know, he's thinking mocking was for testing, but uh, I think testing can be quite different. So any... have... sorry, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> yep. We have our deployment ready. Let's go and test how it looks like. Let's uh, replace this URL. Let's see. Ah, oh, there you go. So our API is up and running with the static uh, JSON message. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, start uh, uh, our, our, our the real uh, crux uh, of the solution. So mm -hmm. the API is up and running. Um, let's let's create a lambda authorizer, right? In order to create a lambda authorizer, I would need to create a lambda function first. As a standard practice, let's uh, import uh, let's import from the lambda construct library. And you've just got an M on import at the start. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
And uh, let's start. Let's continue with the uh, writing our lambda function type. So let's say um, lambda. Lambda optimizer, but let's call it optimizer function. And uh, there's options to initialize this, right? Uh, let's say, uh, let me use uh, uh, Node.js runtime. Runtime dot, uh, let's say, let's use the latest one, yeah? Node.js 14. Uh, and handler to be, we'll create a Lambda function in a bit. And uh, our code which will uh, reside in a directory. And we'll mention the name of the directory here. And let's go and create a Lambda directory. Here as well, let's say I need five. Um, let's say uh, this is this is the place where we'll be writing our uh, lambda authorizer, right? So let's quickly go and see. Uh, oh, I'm missing a uh, missing part of the directory, right? So let's import it as well. Oh, that's oh. all the error. Oh. Yeah, so inherently it's it's very simple, right? Uh, when we want to initialize a lambda function, I just need three parameters, three three arguments. One is the what runtime I'm using, what is the name of the handler, and where is the code, right? And it will take care of everything. And a good starting point uh, for uh, lambda authorizer is the lambda authorizer blueprint. So let's quickly do a uh, 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 a good starting point. Uh, I use it a lot. Uh, if we go to AWS Labs uh, and Lambda Authorizer Blueprints, you could see blueprints for multiple uh, programming language. Uh, let's select Node.js and I just copy your code from here. Yeah. It's easy for me to. It basically gives me a jump start to, uh, you know, start writing uh, the lambda authorizer, right? So let's go here. Let's do a real. And yeah, I mean, uh, as someone was asking, right? What would you do in a lambda authorizer, right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, when, yeah once you once you uh, once the API gateway calls the lambda authorizer. Uh, typically, what we do is uh, we decode a JWT token and then ensure that you know it is validated against an IDP, or you know do do lookup in self-managed database and whatnot, right? So this is a typical uh, you know how we authorize or uh, you know ensure that the uh, the token which is being passed is valid and, uh, and and move ahead. And if it is not valid, just call unauthorized, right? So this is the way uh, we would start. Right, and what we will be doing is, uh, uh, let's uh, just to start, you know, just uh, just to get started, I'll just allow all the methods, right, and then we will change it eventually as we go ahead uh, while when, when, when developing this authorizer. And uh, what we do is, uh, we will just uh, create a auth response uh, and uh, return the auth response. Uh, uh, whether we want to allow the request or deny a request, right? 
so uh, that is how we will be uh, working uh, uh, with the lambda authorizer but before we do that we have created a lambda function here now let's create a lambda authorizer so what we'll be doing is uh, i'll be creating a lambda authorizer uh, let's call it as authorizer as new uh, api dot Request uh, authorizer is equal. This is usual stuff. I will define the, the scope. I will give it a nice name. So for this and um, let's say I'll say I'll say the handler for this is authorizer function. Uh, uh authorizer name if you want to provide a name for this particular authorizer so this name is basically the name for the cdk uh, or the resource uh, you can mention a special name for the authorizer itself which will eventually show up in database console as well let's see it dynamic Uh, what I will also be doing is uh, I will be mentioning what is the identity source. So if you want to have a header argument passed as an identity source, we can also mention that. Let's say API dot uh, identity source. Dot, uh, we mentioned the identity source header as well. Uh, authorization. So I'll be using authorization header uh, as an identity source. Uh, this eventually will be used uh, to cache the, uh, the the policies which are written by the lambda authorizers right so i will i currently let's uh, disable the uh, caching policy because we will be testing it let's say zero i don't want to uh, i don't want to cache anything at this moment we are just testing it right mm -hmm. i could see uh some errors okay so it is something to do with uh, uh the dependencies i guess so let's do one thing let's change the uh dependencies to the the latest cdk construct libraries uh, even the core right? so, uh, and let's go and and let's stop this is where this the redo would help us a lot right yeah, I was just thinking that I was like, this wouldn't happen in CDK too, right? Like, yeah. I, I hit this all the time. Like, you work on your code ten days later, and it pulls down the latest like sub package, which conflicts yeah. with uh, everything else. I think that will um, like our very first show was migrating CDK one to two, but now that we've been working internally with somebody else called Eduardo, and we've built out a lab to do that, I think maybe we'll do the first redo the first section of that lab, and everybody can join in and do it along with us. So, you know, we'll continue to iterate through that. So there was already some response earlier that said they would like some hands-on labs. So that could be really good rather than us just doing it and showing it, but have a lab where everybody can work alongside it as well. Yeah. And, and message um, Paul and myself either on LinkedIn after the stream or the YouTube channel um, or here in the chat right now on Twitch, right? Like if you want a particular subject. Um, we've, been, we've been like looking at like iOS build servers with Mac EC2 can definitely do the advanced CDK workshop that we've been um, helping to, to kind of build. Um, but yeah, each each week we're pretty dynamic in terms of like what we can have scheduled. And there's a couple of special guests coming up, but they're, I think they're in about a month's time so far. So if you've got any uh, if things that you'd like us to, to check out with you, let us know. I'll, I'll hand back to you, Sankit. Did that fix no. it? Yeah, it did. Yeah, it fixed, yeah. So we have an uh, authorizer lambda function, and we also created an, an API gateway authorizer. What we'll do is we'll uh, attach this authorizer uh, with uh, our uh, with our APIs, right? So I say, you know, hey, why don't we use an authorizer? So this like this, okay? So, you know, Okay, 
to know this, which is about to learn about it. Right? Now we have it, right? I mean, now uh, we have it's, it's so simple that you know, hey, use this authorizer, it's as simple as that. And what all what we'll also be doing is uh, we'll also be mentioning that you know, hey, API keys are needed. So, hey, API key required is true. And there you go. So, we have an API gateway now with a lambda authorizer attached to it currently it's the default blueprint which we are using right and uh, let's go and uh, start changing the code here right uh, in, in, the, in the lambda authorizer itself right? so once i will not be changing i will not be doing any actual uh, validation of jwt token as such uh, uh, because that's not our focus here. What we'll be doing is, uh, but I would highly recommend you all to have a proper Lambda authorizer in place, which basically validates the JWT token or an authorizer token, uh, which you are, which you may be passing. Uh, but uh, what we will be doing uh, is basically, uh, uh, you know, writing a lookup code here for um, looking up the API keys, right? Uh, and before we do that, you know, the whole uh, idea here is to use a DynamoDB table to do the lookup. Uh, that is how I would be writing the code. But you, uh, based on what your requirements are, based on what your asks are, you can uh, you know write all sorts of logic here uh, uh, to do smart lookups of API keys. Right. Uh, but let's quickly uh, go here and create a DynamoDB table as well, uh, real quick. Uh, just in the interest of time, I just uh, copy the things here. Right? Just say, hey, import uh, DynamoDB construct libraries. The interest of as well. And I will also create a DynamoDB table. We call it as a lookup table. And it will just have uh, two uh, uh, columns. One is the partition key. I just mentioned it as an ID. Uh, the API keys ID, not the value, would go would go into this particular DynamoDB table. Uh, and uh, because this is this is just a demo, uh, because I want to delete this DynamoDB DynamoDB table when I delete this tag. Uh, I have put in a removal policy to be, you know, destroy this table once I delete this CDK stack. But uh, you may want to be more cautious because it would have that data. Well, removal uh, policy was what I was thinking in terms of RDS before with Beanstalk, right? So you might you might create your RDS instance of Beanstalk as we we're talking about what's new, but uh, you you can control the deletion of that. Um, you know, so it's not tied to the life cycle of what you've got on your first uh, Beanstalk app, especially if you're sharing the database across multiple or you want to keep the database and completely reconstruct your Beanstalk environment. But yeah, same same for Dynamo, right? Like, yeah. it's a funny coincidence that you're, uh, yep, using that same command. Yep. Yeah, uh, cool. So now what we'll do is we'll quickly pass uh, the environment variables. So we'll, let's see. Uh, you know, add environment variable. So I will say that you know, hey, pass the key source here because that will be used to do a DynamoDB lookup. And I will get this value from our stack properties. So I will say, I will say, props dot. I'll also pass the name of the uh, uh, name of the DynamoDB table. And plus one JWO01. It's like, yeah, definitely a must, right? Removal policies, having those set. To it, it, that, that reminds me of like a good friend of mine that I've worked with for a long time. Um, you know, he, he was, he, you know, he's a mentor of mine, but he uh, once right clicked on a database in production and deleted it when he thought he was on the dev server 
I said, what did you do? And he goes, I restored from backup. <laughs> uh, so we've, I'm I've sure we've had that. those experiences. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, I said, did you lose much data? And he said, oh, yeah, we lost a bit. Yeah. It was pretty pretty calm about it. But um, it, it was lucky in it, that it was in an industry that it, um, you know, didn't, didn't matter as much as it, it would. But, uh, yeah, making sure you have those locks in place can be, like, really valuable because, you know, we, we should never – go into the console we should never do deletes without care but it but it happens so maybe, maybe one episode or a short thing on the side could be uh things not to do that we've accidentally done in our careers like uh in it right because I, I think everyone's got those stories in some some respect um yeah okay uh so what we'll be doing is we are also granting the uh uh, you know, uh, read access for the lambda function. Right? So let's say look up people dot grant access to uh, this authorizer function here. That should take care of uh, sorry. That should take care of all the uh, permissions here. But additionally, what we will we will we'll also be doing is basically uh, giving the lambda function uh, uh, IAM permission to do an api call to look up the api keys as well right so uh, so what we'll be doing is uh, let me quickly grant that access as well with regards to how we can give the necessary permission to the iam or to the lambda function to do a api key lookup as well And uh, what we are doing inherently is uh, we will be doing a get get API keys request. So I'm making sure that you know you have the necessary IAM uh, IAM policy attached to it. Uh, so I'm just adding a policy statement here uh, and giving it and assigning it to the Lambda function. That would basically that would help me do a do a quick uh, uh, lookup of the API keys from the Lambda function itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so that is pretty much uh, it with regards to the whole CDK stack. Now let's quickly move on to the uh, Lambda authorizer, right? And uh, uh, let's let, the first thing uh, we would like to do here is uh, basically read those environment variables, right? So let's read in here. Uh, the source and the table name, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the environment variables uh, which we have passed through our CDK stack, and uh, uh, we also we will be using a library called as uh, 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 JSON path. Uh, JSON path would help us uh, do uh, uh, you know do a do a nice parsing of our JSON uh, uh, JSON event. And we will be extracting out the request parameters out of it and doing a lookup in DynamoDB table. Okay. So let's, uh, what we'll do is we'll create a, a new file. Let me create a new file here. Let's say package.json. And uh, let's add the dependency here, right? Which is called as. Do the necessary uh, uh, parsing of the JSON. Um, yeah. What I will also be doing is I'll be getting all the necessary dependencies, JSON path, we have added uh, AWS libraries. And I'll create the clients as well, right? Because I'll be doing a DynamoDB lookup and I'll be calling an API gateway call as well. So I have, I have done it here. And now let's start on the logic here. Let, let me put a real uh, try catch block here. Mm -hmm. And I was just checking the time, um, Sankit. Like, uh, we, we can stay for another 20 minutes. No one else is using the AWS Twitch channel. Because I think the audience uh, is quite liking uh, watching you follow along. 
So um, yeah, we're, we're good to go for another 20. So hopefully we can finish the solution. Yeah, we, we will be finishing it and we'll be doing some round of testing as well, you know, uh, using Perfect. Postman. Perfect, done. <laughs> I love your confidence. It always, I always say, yeah, it'll be done in 10 minutes and then it takes like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'll try my best. I, it, it's pretty simple that way because these are like a couple of uh, remote calls which we'll be making and then yep. we are good for testing. Uh, we might get some errors and whatnot, but we'll try to fix it as we go, right? Uh, cool, cool. So let's let's do one thing. Uh, let's kind of variable here. Right. And I was I was looking at um, stupid fat cat's comment, uh, refactoring a mega coupled CDK stack to towing around Dynamo and buckets. Yeah, that, that's that's something I always have to think about, right? Like you've just got to be careful about moving um, assets around stacks so you don't accidentally generate a, a different, uh, you know, like database. Um, this is what you're expecting just using the current one that you'd already generated or you know you're maintaining state within that stack um looking through the comments anything here paul as well it's worth talking about uh, <laughs> programmers real life yeah <laughs> yeah I, I i always uh under under quote how long it's going to take me to do anything that that should be easy we'll get it done we, let's just stream for this one thing matt will take like five minutes and then it's like an hour later. Um, yeah, an hour and a half later. And yeah, the, the wife's knocking on the door. She's like, are you still alive in there? Yeah, a few weeks ago, we did an internal lab on building that um, phaser game. If, if people are interested, maybe we could do that as well. And we thought, oh, this, this should be okay. We'll record it in like an hour or so. And it was like over two hours later, you know, more than twice as long as we expected. So that, that was really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so this is uh, so what I've done is basically a pretty simple thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I used uh, jQuery library, uh, uh, what is it called? Sorry, uh, JSON path library uh, to do a quick uh, uh, parsing of the event. And what I'm doing is, uh, you know, hey, give me a query string parameter for the parameter which I request parameter which I defined uh, while making uh, a call, right? So what it will do is uh, whatever value, the request parameter value for genre, which we are passing, uh, it will just give me the value, whether it would be a cooking or it would be a computer or it can be anything else, right? So it will give me a nice uh, value of the request parameter. So let's, let, let's do one thing, let's print it as well. Let's say, uh, And if if we are if we do not find any lookup key, it just you know respond with unauthorized. Else, what we'll do is we'll move on. Uh, what we will be doing is uh, we will quickly uh, uh, you know start uh, coding with regards to doing multiple lookups. Uh, so let's let's create a DynamoDB uh, lookup. Uh, this, this is these are the parameters which we'll be using to do a quick dynamic dynamic to be called so i'll say that you know hey uh, the input to this is uh, the id for this is lookup key and the table name is the table name which we have passed as the uh, request parameter right uh, environment variable and uh, let me quickly call as well there you go so i'll just uh, wait for it uh, and get a get item call this will return me a value uh, of the api key id this is this is not actually the key value but this is a key id which i'll be storing in dynamodb we'll see how it goes and uh, 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 and it will help us uh, uh, with the, with the future step as well so what I will be doing is I will again do a quick check if that value is present. If it is not, uh, then we will uh, say here, you know, unauthorized. So then we will respond to, uh, let's say, item. If it is not there, you know, again, let's copy, say unauthorized. Else, uh, what we will be doing is uh, 
we'll make we'll make a call to uh, API gateway right now. We will say you know these are the parameters. So what is it? We mean an API key uh, with ID, which is looked up from our DynamoDB table. Right? So it's pretty much uh, straightforward that way. And again, uh, again a check, quick check. If uh, if we are not able to find that API key, API data. Again, right. it's, it's as simple as that. And then what we'll be doing is uh, we'll get we'll get the API key value. Make sure that you know the value which is written by the API gateway. We don't print it or store it somewhere. It's really important uh, that we don't do a console print. You know, you would get you know calls from your security to you know why. Are we, storing the API key values there uh, and uh, yeah pretty much it uh, so what i will do is i'll quit i'll just copy this thing right? and uh, i'll paste it here but what i will also need to do is uh, i will also need to make sure that uh, i pass the usage key to our auth policy as well and we'll change the uh, the constructor used for our policy. I will say, hey, you know, identifier as because we will be using this policy uh, object to convert it to a JSON, which would be eventually returned, right? So yeah, this is pretty much it. Uh, oh yeah in build right so we have we have changed the constructor for our policy uh, and for build what we will be doing is uh, we will go and see where that function is defined I will do is uh, in this build function. I will say that you know this is how I will be returning the API keys, right? The dynamically looked up API key value in the in the policy. Yeah. So this is this is pretty much it, right? It's it's uh, it's very straightforward that way. Uh, uh, do a dynamic dynamic DB lookup get the AWS key ID. And once you get that AWS key ID, uh, uh, construct, uh, uh, do an, uh, make a call for call for API gateway, get the uh, identifier value and uh, return a policy response. Yeah, so that is it. Uh, you want to, if you want to have, if you want to pass any additional context, do that here. But I think uh, let's clean up some things here. Some of the methods for our key. And in error, what we'll be doing is I be if 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 there is an error anywhere in the code, uh, I want to make sure that I do an unauthorized response. So okay. just print what that error is and uh, return an unauthorized response. So yeah. So our code is ready now. Let's do a quick check, right? Let's do let's go to the lambda directory and do npm install first to make sure we have uh, uh, all the dependencies like jpot and everything installed yeah there you go let me go i can see if yeah no modules directory is present yeah, everything looks okay and we will Go to the previous directory. 
Oh, sorry. Here you go. And while it deploys, uh, it would uh, basically uh, is something. Where does it kind of find as it is this? So it's uh, interesting. Let's try to see. Let's do a quick check at our stack. Uh, what am I missing here? Is there a typo somewhere? Matter, but let me go out to see if you can see. Do the same error. I think uh, JW is on something like there was a dot prefix um, in the directory. Um, like if you scroll back to the error, I think it was like dot lambda, was it? Yeah, that's right. So it's probably just a typo. So go, go scroll back up the logs. Let's just have a nose. Mm -hmm. um, so we it was just here actually. Cannot find asset blah blah blah. So line uh, one hundred and thirteen of the asset staging. Mm -hmm. Let's call lib. Okay, so. I think I just to do with uh, dot slash. I think I can use the slash here. Uh, yep. Let's see. Ah, there you go. Let's go to the uh, zip file. There you go. The changes. And hope uh, so. What will really happen is uh, if if you trace back uh, the code which we have written, right? Currently, yep. uh, a new DynamoDB table would be created. Uh, however, uh, when we first send a re request, uh, what will happen is I will get an unauthorized, uh, primarily because the lookup in the in, in the uh, in the DynamoDB table would fail, right? I will get an another response. What we'll be doing is we'll quickly add uh, the API keys inside our DynamoDB table, and um, uh, uh, and let's and let's see how it would perform. Right? We'll quickly see yep. that as well. Yeah, let's check it out. Pretty excited to see. Yeah, I have. Uh, let's see. If it has created a yeah, there we go. We have a good API right now. I think it's still deploying. But let's go and see. So what I've done is I have created two keys already. So these are the two API keys, and uh, let's quickly create uh, usage plans. Okay, let's go there, and I have cooking usage plan and computer usage plan, right? And appropriate uh, keys are associated with uh, the usage plan. So, so for a computer usage plan, I have associated a computer key, and for a cooking usage plan, I have associated cooking key, right? Uh, let's check usage. So zero requests have been made so far. Let's check here as well. Zero requests made so far. That is super cool. Let's go and see the details around it, right? So if you say, uh, if you look at this, right? Uh, for a computer usage plan, the quota which I have assigned is 10 requests per day. Uh, for a cooking usage plan, it is 15 requests per day. 
Uh, throttling is something which I have kept in on higher side because we'll be doing continuous testing. So, yeah. uh -huh. so let's test out the quota feature here because it is easier to test that way. Uh, and uh, let's go and see. Uh, oh, cool. Uh, the deployment has completed. Let's go to our uh, uh, postman and see what happens, right? Uh, yeah, we got a message null. Okay, let, that is interesting. So the error was caught? Cool. Yeah. So we'll yeah. <laughs> let's go to our Lambda function and go and see. Let's go and see. Security for ob uh, obfuscation, right? Like just null on the end user side. <laughs> yeah, maybe. And, and then the and is. then the real way that we debug code, right? We we try it and we look at the logs. Yeah, let's go and see. There you go. We so much quicker. Than that, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, we have something. Oh, uh, we, oh, I see, I see. Okay, so let's go here and make our function async. Let's go to CDK deploy real quick. I somehow wish to make this a little faster somehow. But yeah. I think that like, all everybody really loves CloudFormation, less so now because of CDK. But everybody who uses CloudFormation or CDK or any abstraction in front of CloudFormation says just make it create cloud resources faster. I want it now. We we used to be unhappy that we you know we couldn't get a server in six months. Now we can get a server in minutes, but but now I really want my infrastructure like now. Like like one minute. I, is two I, minutes. Yeah, I, I, I love ago. it, right? Like my code's compiling. Like my my computer's gotten too fast for yeah. excuse, and I'm using like dynamic languages, right? So, so now it's like I need a coffee break, and um, and I find yeah, that uh, CloudFormation is the perfect excuse to go and grab a coffee and come back. <laughs> hey, Derek. <laughs> yeah, it is always the thing, right? Uh, when do you need this server, right? I needed it yesterday. Mm. So yeah, it's always I needed yesterday. But it is doing a ton, right? Like when you watch like what's actually kicking off, like you're you're amazed at like how much is actually getting built out, um, you know, all in all in real time. And you know, it takes a while to launch databases. It takes a a, a while to launch um, EC2 instances and run boot scripts and everything like that. So, like I understand the timing. Um, I mean, I think X one zero one one has has the answer there. But like, while you're waiting, you could write unit tests. I mean, that, that <laughs> that's it, right? Your code is going to work. Let's just write the unit tests to satisfy an external requirement. Well, all I'm going to say is unit tests are good. <laughs> but, but like, but like when we're doing proof of concepts, that's uh, I, I I usually do the naughty and I kind of avoid them, right? Like, but uh, but yeah, if I was building for production, I'd, I'd yeah. So, uh, I have sent a request now. Uh, I am getting an unauthorized message, right? So, let's do one thing. Uh, let's go to uh, DynamoDB table. And let us uh, add those keys there. <laughs> People are like, is that Chime in the background? Yeah, we're, was, we're getting summoned. Chime. Yeah. It was Chime. But that's fine. Yeah. This is the value. And what we could do is we could also add, uh, what was the name? So that's the, the new um, DynamoDB UI. So I wonder how everybody likes using that now. Yeah. I, I, it, 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 
I, I got confused a couple of days back, but yeah, I think it's it's uh, it's it's more cleaner now. Yeah, I, yes. I was kind of used to the old one, um, and, and I guess that was like Route 53. I was quite used to the old one, so I feel that I'm a little more, I'm a little slower with the new interface. Um, I mean, it's not much you can do about it. You have to adjust and move forward, but I, but I think it's it works pretty well now. Yeah. So I have created an item. So if you look at this, right, uh, if the genre is computer, use this API key. Let's say I like it for uh, cooking as well. Pending to be associated with this is a cooking key, right? So I'm, I'm just using IDs, yeah? I'm not. I'm not using the API key value as such because that is where I would be looking it up in my authorization. Okay, there you go. So we have entries for cooking and for computer, right? Yep. Cool. So let's go and uh, test it out. You know? Oh, I see it being still unauthorized. Let's Are you passing see. in the, the, the key? Uh, no, so I'm not. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, there it is. Yep. Let's see. Oh, it's still unauthorized. Is, is the key genre? Yeah, the key is so let's, let's do one thing and let's go to put some console let's let's see what is happening in our console for in the logs first oh i see check uh, is not defined oh, yeah. i see this so oh. Somehow, oh, it's JP. Oh, my, I'm sorry about that. And saying it, I'm not going to tell you, I told you so, but uh, I told you so. It's like, <laughs> oh, it'll just be another five <laughs> or 10 minutes, and it's always like another hour, right? Like, um, but it's fine. Like, um, We've, we've just been checking the schedule in the background. We can go for a little bit longer. And I think everyone's enjoying it. And they're listening to the birds in your window. And we can see it's gone from darkness to light. So, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's one of, you see, you hear the birds chirping? Yeah, we can hear the birds chirping a little bit. I think I heard magpies on Paul's uh, shed just before as well. I heard like... Um, yeah, I have, a lot yeah. Of, I have a lot of birds. And they are like, I'm literally on the shed. And it's quite windy. And so there must be, oh, I don't know, we're com I guess we're coming into spring. So it's, um, you know, I'm getting some a lot of birds around, a lot of background noise. And it's it's quite warm at the moment. It was a little cool just before, but I'm pretty hot in my shed at the moment. Well, uh, same same here in Derek. Mumbai. Yeah, what's the temperature in Mumbai? You guys, uh, yeah, Celsius for me, right? <laughs> yeah, but back to yep. X. X1's comment, the code isn't returning a 500. Are we sure we're looking up the correct parameter? Because it's still coming back as unauthorized. Is it yeah, so up the it, right yeah, so what, what really happened was uh, I, had, I had a typo here. Instead of JP, I had just JQ. Uh, that is the reason why it went to this catch block, right? Yep. And it returned me an unauthorized response. Well, because the JQ line is extracting the key out of the URL, is it? Yes, it is extracting uh, the genre uh, uh, request parameter. And just, just go up a tiny little bit thing. for me to to where that line yeah. was. Yeah. Like, is that that's a query string parameter? Like, is it the query string or is it header? No, currently we are using query string. So if we look at the request which we are making, it's. Oh right, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see. Yeah, in both yeah. Yeah, no, it has both places. this is the query parameters only. So if I add it yeah. here, say ABC. It will just yeah, yeah. There. Yep. 
I, I, for a second there, I thought you had it on the body section and you were passing. I mean, sorry, I, you had it on headers there. So yeah, and and was it like cased correctly? Was it computer versus lower C computer? Yeah. So what I've done is uh, I've used uh, a capital uh, case here, cookie. Yep. Okay. Computer, and I'm using the same uh, case here. Let's see. Oh my God! We are still getting an unauthorized error. Uh, let's go and check it once again. We were sort of wondering, Matt and I, whether um, maybe some people wanted to like a bit of a bit of swag, and whether we think people would be interested in having some sort of competition or something next week. Um, we, we don't have too much swag. We've got like um, the only thing that we've designed at the moment is our is our mug. And you can have a look at that here. I'll paste the link in. Is, is this the mug? No. I left my mug inside today. I, I, I forgot. But if you go to the devsintheshed.com, you can see the mug that we've got. And uh, you know, if people would if people would like that, we could we could hook someone up next week with one. I think. And mine's still arriving, obviously. <laughs> but uh, we we actually had a couple of people get um, little mugs um, before. Uh, speak to Renee; he'll hook you up. Yeah. So. Um, I think I think you've sent me one of the mugs that you had, right? Like, but I know Aaron had his arrive a couple of days ago because I saw him post back to us. If uh, everyone remembers Aaron, who's a bit of a regular. Yeah, um, I sent one to Aaron. I've got yours ready to be picked up and sent. Um, but yeah, we, you know, that's you know, what what um, what what engineer doesn't like drinking coffee or tea out of a mug? That's me. I avoid. I've, I've been, yeah. So uh, I, I have. I don't drink tea and tea and coffee somehow. I, I have not gotten used to it. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. Am I the only one? Or it's, yeah, it's, pretty it's much. Pretty, well, Paul. Paul tried it for like a day, right? Like I'm sure he won't mind me talking about it. But Paul did I try. try. And, and, and he just texts to me, he's like, I'm dying, Matt, I'm dying, I can't. And it's like, it's only been four hours since you decided to give up caffeine, Paul. One day, one day wasn't, um, you, you start, you do feel it after one day, but I tried it for like a couple of weeks and I, I kind of, for, you, you, you forget, you're like, I went without coffee and I got these really, really bad headaches. It, it, it's hard to get, to wean yourself off. It's very surprising. Mm. And I only have one caffeinated coffee per day, one. I'd probably have three, but uh, but um, <laughs> it used to be it used to be one until uh, until I ended up having meetings all the time in the office, and then you know now at home, like uh, I brought a barista machine, right? So it ends up being free coffees every day, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe a good prize to give out is you know like uh, Nespresso vouchers or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, and I can see Tori said switch to tea, you'll avoid the headaches. I, I actually go to tea in the afternoons and the evenings, so uh, I really like green tea and chamomile. Those are probably my favourites. Yeah, I really like chamomile tea as well. But but like I still I just like coffee. I, I just like it so much. I don't want to not have it. Well, here we go. Publishing. Yeah, sorry, yeah, we missed uh, JSON object here. I'm just publishing it once again. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll, I didn't expect you to build everything for CDK. I was half expecting Sam to make an appearance. So it's, uh, it's nice to see that you're a fellow CDK, uh, you know, supporter. I didn't know that about you, uh, Sankit. Actually, well, yesterday about, we had uh, the session on. So, sorry, Sankit. I spoke about CDK in India Summit as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so it, it has helped me, you know, put my existing knowledge about programming in, you know to provision the infrastructure as well. So uh, it really helps us put my thinking hat on and see, you know, how how creative I can be uh, while provisioning the infrastructure as well. Yeah, and I, I think Sam, like, 
correct me if I'm wrong, I, I, like I don't use Sam as much. Uh, I've been playing with Chalice lately, but Sam, like you can get API Gateway, you can get uh, Dynamo. There's a few things that you have access to, but, but you're right. Like that's why they did Sam with CDK as a release earlier this year. Um, but, but also if you just do everything through CDK, you can generate whatever you want end to end, which is pretty nice. You pretty much can services. with Sam as well, but you have to revert to cloud formation. So, so Sam has uh, an additional template that abstracts a lot of things to make it easier. And if you need it, you can put normal CloudFormation in there as well. Um, but Sam and CDK, like Sam is really nice to put it all together, but um, Sam plus CDK is, is something that came up yesterday. So last night we had a, um, a meetup. Um, Sam's serverless application model. Uh, I'm still editing the video from last night from, from that workshop and we'll do a work through of that. But it's it's specifically around um, to answer stupid fat fat cat's question, specifically around building serverless applications and a, and a mechanism to be able to run your uh, thanks Derek um, to be able to run your um, you know your lambda based applications locally, um, and, and so if you're you know if you can go ahead and do that so you can invoke your APIs you can feel what it feels like to be you know to have that you know cold start latency you can run custom um, custom runtimes. You can use Lambda, um, uh, like container-based Lambda functions, um, but uh, you can't you can't mimic like SQS and those services locally. However, if you were building something on Dynamo, you can definitely download the DynamoDB Java application, DynamoDB locally, and use that as well. But yeah, I, I use Sam all the time. Like at least once a week for a proof of concept, I, I use Sam. It's still yeah, I still find it faster than CDK all round. Yeah, and you've got a bit more ceremony this. on CDK. I uh, go ahead. Sorry, Sankit. And then there is things of you know writing unit test cases as as we are talking about, right? So uh, writing unit test cases on our local environment is much more faster. Like I, so the 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 way I'm doing right now, if it had been a local environment, it would be like super fast for me to write even unit test cases and test it locally, right? So Sam really helps me there. Yep. Yeah, Sam is really nice. How are we going? Let's see. Fingers crossed. Oh, I see a forbidden now. Forbidden. So thing. Yep. So, so what really happened was, uh, uh, let me go and see. Uh, so it it basically injected uh, uh, the API keys here. Properly, I do not see a reason why it not. It not. But let's see. Uh, if, oh, I see it now. Uh, so what is really happening is uh, we have not associated the uh, <coughs> stages with the with the usage plan, right? So let me do that at API stage. Yeah, there you go. So the association of usage plan with API key, API gateway was really missing. Let me associate it with a stage here cool yeah and, and before you test it's... again i think we need to have a bit more suspense right so maybe we have a countdown <laughs> before you hit the uh the button and postman yeah i think this should work it's fine so, so what, so... what's the bits have we solved it all uh let us know in the audience you know i'm going with yeah, yes i i, I <laughs> think so but we're, we're building the hype maybe well, worst case we'll brute force our way through it yep let's okay. see yeah. let's go three two one oh forbidden ah <laughs> i lost the bet <laughs> after you associate that do you have to redeploy the stage uh okay so let me do one thing uh let me let me delete the usage plan. Yeah, let's recreate it again. Do that. Let's see. Delete usage plan. Oh, oh, there are stages associated. Okay. See you next time, Tori and um, Fat Cat. Let's 
plan. There you go. Let's create a usage plan. Let's see. Let's let's test. Oh my god. Still copy them. Let's go and see the logs if we can. So this happens to the best of us, right? It's always live. It's always in a demo. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when it's been practiced 50 times, that's that's when it's more fun. I was, I was giving a demo of like EC2 Mac command lines for um, for like a customer this week. And I didn't realize that, uh, you know, like uh, the markdown um, view that I, the markdown tool that I was using, the view that it creates was actually like changing the commas uh, and the, the quotation marks. And um, yeah, and I'm like, why is this not working? I did test before. Like, this is ridiculous. Like two minutes later, I'm like, oh man, <laughs> <laughs> it happens happens to everyone. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. I think uh, it's all sorted out. And suspect. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to work. Let me send it to you. Do we want to check the, the header or authorization uh, token again? We've got somebody in the comments asking. Let's look for all the other stuff again. Yeah, probably. So, yeah, so I have I have added a header. It's, just, it's, it's, it's like any. Oh, we do need to say check the. Is this actually expecting a bearer token? I don't think we're doing JWT validation here, though. No, because yeah, I'm we'll, saying that identity source is look, the header or authorization, mm -hmm. right? So that, that is also fine. And I just change the header value here. So it is expecting a header to uh, authorization token which I have been passing, but we are not validating it anyways, right? Yep, and that's the right. We're, like we haven't changed anything to do with the URI, right? So we're still calling the the prods uh, endpoints. Uh, yep. Okay. Check a couple of the obvious things. Yeah, that's the same. I've been testing like, like testing this like. Couple yeah, of times maybe before. like make log the value and make sure that it's it's actually picking genre up correctly and seeing what that yeah. looks like, and also yeah, what it we, might be um coming back from Dynamo. Yeah, let me quickly put a couple of uh, couple of. Uh, And um, what else we need? So I think Dynamo will be okay. Let's put up on the side. So 
we have uh, added a console out console log for the response from DynamoDB. We have added console log for the API gateway data. This shouldn't matter, but it should be. I was so confident that it would work. <laughs> but let's see. Fingers crossed. Do we do we want to do another bet in the chat? <laughs> Is this the the final time? Um, I think the audience appreciate it more when it doesn't work. Like I mean, I did when I was in the audience. It's always funny. very stressful when you're presenting though. it is and it's always you, you don't realize it but it's actually a lot more stressful coding live right as well like because if you miss one thing or yes you, you do or say something um it's a little off uh <laughs> you've got like an hey, entire audience <laughs> so there were like a yeah, couple of typos while i was typing but uh, yeah they're like pretty easy to fix. Issues like these are something which are tricky. But let's see. Well, I've got about nine minutes. So hopefully we can get it to work. We're only a little bit over this show. Awesome. Let's test. Here we go. Oh, no. So it's 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 giving forbidden. Maybe our lookup and everything seems to be working, but there's something which we're missing. Let's see if we can solve it. We can um we can always pick it up and do a miniature stream on our YouTube uh, later during the week if we work out what it is and people want to see the fix. Um, yeah. But let's let, let's try and solve in the next like eight or so minutes. And trust me, this this happened to me as well. Like um, with the CDK version two upgrade, I had to do another stream uh, to finish it off just because we ran out of time. Yeah, there you go. I think it's pretty yep. pretty much doing the stuff. That, you know, look up is the key perfectly matched? Just double check that quickly in Dynamo. Yeah, it is because I got a response from uh, the API gateway as well. This is the API gateway okay. key value. So it seems our code is perfectly fine. There's something missing here in the way API gateway. Allowing the wrong resource, JW is suggesting. Resources, we have this books resource. Okay, the auth is there. This looks fine. This looks fine as well. Authorizations. 
to a cast to find such plans. Back to my phone. See the auth policy here. Since I get this object, Yeah, maybe that's an idea, like log out the policy after we build it so we can have a look at it. So what, what is auth response there at that point? Um, that, that, that auth response has probably got the wrong policy then. Something is wrong there. Yeah, probably, yes. I'm, I'm just checking. Yeah, see, like he, he's a problem with, uh, you know, non-type languages, a, a little bit of an extra problem. Yeah, I also wanted to see. Yeah, I wanted to see the function that I added properly. Oh, well, there you go. Let's go see the kit right here. This, this this is basically JavaScript, right? If it had been a TypeScript, then it would be easily easy to figure out syntax errors. I think this should take care of it. I think this was a problem. Nice. Fingers crossed. So we're gonna do another bet within the audience. Um, yes or no? Let's see. I, I think we've got three minutes left before we've got to cut the stream. So I, I am fingers crossed betting. This that we're, yeah. You see, most of these issues are like these are like for typos or some something. You know, well, like the one tiny little config that you forget to do this once, like <laughs> on the API <laughs> gateway side or whatever, right? It's always something little. Yeah, yeah. And we've got the war in the comments between dynamically typed languages and statically typed languages each have their own benefits and cons right <laughs> at the end of the day yeah shine once again yep another one our mine's going off as well but uh I, I've yeah, just declined it. <laughs> oh no! <It's> <laughs> no, no, that's that's okay. So what we'll do is um, I'm going to quickly put a link in the chat. So let me drop that in. Subscribe what? to our YouTube channel, and we'll do a pop-up session, and we'll finish it all off. Yeah, so like we, we won't have we won't be able to get on the AWS Twitch channel uh, later on because it looks like it's pretty full. Um, but yeah, subscribe to the YouTube and we'll do a video later today with Sankit and we'll show you probably the one tiny little thing <laughs> that needed fixing. Um, so we'll do that like uh, we'll do that impromptu sometime later uh, today when we've we've solved it. So yeah, um, stick with us and we'll we'll catch everyone. Um, later, but uh, Sankit, it's been awesome and uh, really, really happy you decided to do it all with CDK. 
So I know it took a bit of extra time. But uh, yeah, no, it's, it's been really good having you. And uh, we, we will solve it and show everyone sometime sure. later. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching and, uh, and, and, and grab our uh, YouTube. Um, I don't usually like to push uh, subscriptions, but if you do want to see the solution, just um, yeah, subscribe later um, today um, to see it all happen. Um, else, just visit and you should see the video of the solution um, later on because we kind of use, uh, we use uh, YouTube as the archive. So yeah, uh, everyone enjoy the rest of your days and we'll catch you uh, later. And thanks, um, Sankit, for coming on as a special guest. It's been a, a privilege. Thanks, Thanks Matt and Paul. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.